Good morning. Today is Monday. Chai Elul, the 18th day of Elul. It is a very big Yom Tov. It is the birthday of both the Baal Shem Tov, the holy Baal Shem Tov, the founder of Hasidus. And it is the day, the birthday of the Alter Rebbe, the, the author of the Tanya that we're learning here. First Chabad Rebbe. It is the day also that uh, the Baal Shem Tov was, uh, had this, that his teacher, Achio Ashilaini, came from a different world to teach him the Torah, and he taught him for 10 years. That was on this, on this day, Chai Elul, and it is also the day that the Baal Shem Tov revealed himself. He revealed the teachings of Hasidus, and that's what we, the fact we are sitting and studying the Tanya today, it benefiting from the Baal Shem Tov's uh, teachings. This is that started from this day, Chai Elul, the eighth day of Elul. It is also eighth day of Elul, as the Rebbe says, Chai is from means life. We have to bring a life into the month of Elul. This is what the, the, the Hasidus helps us to make. The whole preparation of the of getting ready for Shoshana. So yeah, so this is, is also twelve days until Rosh Hashanah now. So we have uh, from Chayel to Rosh Hashanah every day corresponds to a month of the year. That means today the eighth day of Elul corresponds to the month of Tishrei. Tishrei is a, a month which includes the rest of the year, and we have to reflect on this month and prepare ourselves for the next month, for the next year should be, and indeed will be, Bezrat Hashem, a good year. So, we started yesterday the 15th chapter of Yigeret HaKadosh, and this is the, um, uh, we explained that this is a very fundamental chapter, which exp- the chapter explains the concept of the 10 attributes the ten sephiris, the holy attributes, the way Hashem conducts the world. And in order to understand this concept, the Alter Rebbe, in a way, gives us two introductions. Yesterday we learned introduction number one, and that was that to understand Hashem, we can understand it by way of understanding um, our own, our own condition, our own flesh, the uh, the human characteristics, because it says me besari from my flesh I can see God, because God created us in His image, and that we explained in length yesterday, how all of this, from understanding. We explained why, because that godliness is in us. If, if the idea that we can understand Hashem through understanding ourselves is because Hashem invested, He invested His the neshama in a, a human being. He brought also what it says, Borchi Nafshi, what King, King David says in the Tehillim, that my soul blesses Hashem, and the, the Talmud tells us five things. What how Hashem is compared to the soul. And finally, it says also what Isaiah says, that when Hashem created man, he blew in his nostrils a soul of life. And we explained that this is different between the creation of any any other thing, the creation that was created with the words of Hashem, and it's basically Hashem brought something to be. But when it comes to man, Hashem created it in two, in two stages. Step number one, he created the body of man, and then he blew in him, the nas- in his nostrils, a soul of life. So that's, this is the meaning, meaning to say that when Hashem invested in man the so- himself, the soul of life, it is like it's not something that he just created a soul. That the soul is part of Hashem himself, as the Alter Rebbe says in the earlier chapter, part of the Tanya, that the Nefesh, Nefesh Hashem, is the second soul, the godly soul of a man, 
is chilek eloka mimal mamash. It is literally a part of Hashem. Hard to understand. But this gives us an understanding why when we focus, understand our own uh, emotion, our own intellect, our own different the things that make up the human characteristic, we can understand also Hashem, because Hashem really invested himself in us. That was introduction number one that we read yesterday. Today, the Alter Rebbe continues with a second introduction. And this is sort of a disclaimer that after we ex- learned yesterday that Hashem invested himself in us and, 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 and the, the, the 10 attributes, godly attributes, we can find it in, in in the, by human condition, one may take it to his head and go to his head and think, "Oh, wait a second! I'm a, so I have kindness, just like Hashem has kindness. I have emotions, just like there is up there emotions. I have intellect in a similar way." So the Alter Rebbe says, "Hold on a minute! No, no, no! It's not that way. We have to understand that our kindness is way, way different." Yes, it comes from the source from there, from the spiritual levels, but it's, we're not talking about in the same level at all. We have to put things in perspective, basically. And he's going to bring an example of the kindness of Abraham Avinu. So let's look inside. Says the Alter Rebbe, it is necessary to state first, what I heard from my teacher, Olav Shalom, who was the Magid of Mezrich, there's a verse that Avram says that I am dust and ashes. When, when did Avram say, say it? Uh, this was in the time when Avram Avinu was asking Hashem, he begged Hashem to have pity and not destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he kept asking and asking and says, I want to ask again, please, I know I asked you so much, but, and, and I am dust and ashes. So then, what is the dust and ashes? What does he mean by that? One of the, uh, as Rashi explains, that he says, I'm like dust. I could have been dust. And then when, I, when Hashem saved him from the war, when he fought the war with the kings, he could have been turned into dust. And ashes is also when he was uh, thrown into the fire and Hashem saved him from there. So he said it could have been ashes. So the Mizrit Chamagi gives a whole different understanding what is what Avram Avinu says? I, I'm dust and ashes. He says this. Avram Avinu said, referring to the neshama, the shine, light of the neshama that shines in his body, from the light from the supreme chesed. This is his attribute, the attribute, attribute of Ahavaraba, the great love. Avram Avinu had such great love to Hashem. In fact, it says that once, since Avram Avinu was in this world, the, the attribute of kindness sent, said to Hashem, God, I, I'm, I uh, have no purpose in this world anymore because Avram is, Avram is doing what I, what I am supposed to do. Avram opened up, he had the kindness, he opened up the... A hotel and then he invited people and he fed them and so on and so forth. So Nusachach Shabo Oyo Midas Midas Avarab Shoyo Oyo Vesakodesh Baruch Hu with this Avram Avinu loved Hashem Ahava Gedoy Love El Yoyno Kol Kach. He loved them such a great love, an elevated love. Until he became a, like a chariot to Hashem. What does it mean became like a chariot? I mean, I mean that he served Hashem. He was nullified to Hashem. He could have said like Avram was became a servant of Hashem. However, there's a difference. A servant 
even though a servant that is doing everything what the master tells him, but he still he has his own desire and his own thing, what he wants to do, except that he subjugates himself to Hashem, to his master. But Avram Avinu says, the Alter Rebbe, he was like a Merkava, like a chariot. A chariot not only does what the, what the wagon driver wants him to do, but it doesn't have its own desire. So Avram was in a, such a level of love to Hashem that his desire became Hashem's desire. He didn't have his own selfish desire. That's how devoted he was. Now once we know that Avram was in such a high level, his love was such a great level, now one might pass, possibly assume that the level of uh, kindness and love in the higher attributes we would, one might think that it is similar to the level of love that Avram Avinu had. In other words, the love that Avram Avinu had comes from the chesed, the higher love, the spiritual love. And one might think that it is some similarity there. Except that this is much greater uh, and, and without any limits. Because it is known from the supernal midas, the supernal attributes, that they themselves have no, essentially they have without an end and limit. They have no end and limit. Why? Because the light of Hashem shines and is enclosed, it's vested in them, literally. And he, Hashem, and his midos and his attributes, his vessels, they are one. So being that they are one, that's why the, the attributes in the higher levels, in the higher worlds, are endless. But in regards, as in regards to the soul of man, however, which is enclosed, it is vested in, in matter, in the material thing, body. So the man's attributes does have limits does have an end. But nevertheless, one might think, so I understand, yes, I understand Avram Avinu is, after all, human. So the middle, the attribute of kindness that Avram had was limited to one way. And the attributes of the spiritual world, kindness of the spiritual world, has no limits. Haval Mekomokem, but nevertheless, Salke Daita Chamina, one, might possibly assume that the attributes of of uh, the higher of Avraham Avinu are in the same type, the same type as the supernal attributes. That's why Avraham Avinu comes to make a very clear statement and says to Hashem. I know that my, what I, whatever I have is nothing, is like dust and ashes. This is why he said, I am dust and ashes. Why? That Rebbe goes to explain now. And, and, he'll, ex, and, and explain it, he'll explain it outside and then he'll, we'll look at it inside. That Rebbe is going to explain. He says that what is dust? And ashes. What does ashes come from? He says the ashes when you burn something. Let's say you have a beautiful, beautiful piece of furniture, a, piece, a table, a wooden table, expensive table. And what is the table made out of? So we know that we have the basic elements, as the Rambam says. There is the Eish, Ruach, Maim, Afa, the fire, air, water, and earth. Those are the four elements that everything in the world. That's the basic elements. Some have more water, some have more fire, some have more earth. 
but the wood, the table, is also made out of those, th- those four elements. Now, what happens when the fire consumes the, ash, the table? So what happens is that the elements of fire, air, and water go up in smoke. Because the smoke contains, uh, has, has the element of fire, goes up, has the elements of air, evaporates, and has the element of uh, moist, like water. What is left is the ashes. The ashes is from the element of earth that the fire does not have effect on it. And that is left. So basically, the element of ashes is the table. The, ta- the table is reduced to ashes. Now, if someone walks into your house and you show them the beautiful table, expensive table, made in Italy, costs $10,000. And if when it's reduced in ashes, you put it in a cup, can you compare the two and say, okay, this is, this is, it is the same essence, the same thing, the same element of, of earth, but obviously it's a totally different, it's a totally different animal. And that's what Avram Avinu is saying to Hashem. I am like ashes compared to the ultimate kindness, the level of the middle is the attributes of Hashem of the highest supernal world. I'm like ashes. Yes, we may have the same root, the same element of earth, but I'm ashes compared to this. That's what, that's what Alter Rebbe explains. Let's see it inside. This is why. He said, I am dust and ashes. That, that is like ashes, which are the essence, just like the, the ashes is the essence of the wood that is being burnt, the burnt wood. Which was composed of, it was, was, uh, composed of the four basic elements. Now the Gimel Yesoidois, Eish Maim Ruach, the three elements of fire, water, and air, they passed on, they passed, uh, passed away. And they were consumed in the smoke that was, compo- was uh, made out from the combination of these three. And it is known <coughs> that the smoke is made out of these three elements. And the fourth element, that was in the wood, that is the earth of it, that goes down. And the fire does not dominate it. This is what remains existing. And this is the ashes. Now the Alter Rebbe goes on explaining the analogy. The whole essence of the wood. That it, the tangible, it's, it's tangible substance. The chaimroi, that the matter of the wood, the tzurasai, and the image of the wood, the oirech, the roicha, the oivi, the length, the width, the thickness, show your nirala ein kodem shenisra, that was be able to see. You saw the beautiful table before it was burned. Ikaroi oyami said the offer shupai. So the basic element was the basically was derived from the element of of earth. Rakshayish ma'im ruach klunim boy. The other three elements, the fire, water, and air, is also included in it, it's comp- compounded in it. <clears throat> because the earth is the element that is most chumri, uh, it is the most material element of them all. That in the, the element of earth has the width, has the length, has the thickness, the density. Which is not so in the case of the fire and air. It doesn't have the thickness, it doesn't have the density, it doesn't have the, the length, it, it, it's, it's more spiritual. And even the element of water, it is uh, the, the, those, the density in, in the water is also much less than in the, in the wood. And therefore, it says the entire the dimension of the wood, the length, the width, the density, all came from the earth and all returns to earth. 
שהוא האפר אני שרחה שנפרדו ממנו אש ומים רוח, which is the ashes which is left after the fire, water and, uh, air, and air was departed from them. והנה, now the Alter Rebbe goes to, exp- to finalize the example, כמו איש האפר אל הדמיון. אל ערך וערך למוצאי עץ הגודל, just like the ashes that has no comparison to the quantity of the, the quality to the big wood, ואוירך ורויכה ואויבי in the land and the width and the density, קודם שנשרה before it was burned, לא בכמוסה ולא באיכוסה, not in his in quality, not in quantity. אף שהוא, הוא מאוס ועצמו סוי ממנו נסב, although it is, comes from it, And, it, and, 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 and this is the very essence of it. The same thing it says Avram Avinu, Kein al derech Moshul. And so too, use it metaphorically, Omer Avram Avinu al vasholem al midosay. Avram Avinu, of blessed memory, um, said on, uh, peace upon him, but said on his midah, on his attribute, midah is a chesed v'ava, the attribute of kindness and love, that shines in him and is vested in his body. Although it is the very same level of Ahava and love and the, the highest supernal chesed of Atzilus, which is the highest world, which shines in his soul, which was, as we said before, a chariot, for the, uh, a heavenly chariot to the will of Hashem. Nevertheless, Afal Pikein, Beridato lemato leislabesh beguf, but when this descended down to be enclosed and vested in the body, al yedei ishtal shelosa ilmo esim madrega lemadrega lidei tzimtzumim radim, through going down the chain-like descent of the world from level to level through many contra- contractions, there is no comparison, there is no proportion to the light and of love that shines in him to the light and love that is in the higher world, the chesed alien, the supernal chesed of Atzilus. The only comparison is just like the wood and the ashes. Just like the, the comparison, the proportion of the, of the very essence of the earth that becomes ashes. Compare it to, the, to the, when it was part of the tree, when this was a tree which was beautiful to see and good to eat. Aldech Marshall using an, an, an analogy. Says the Alter Rebbe, and concludes, and so much more so in, in, with, with, uh, with thousands of degrees of separation is when, we, when we're talking about us and the spheres, the higher spheres, our spheres of humans and the, and the spheres, the attributes of Hashem. Nevertheless, the Torah speaks in human phraseology using analogy and metaphor so we can understand. So this is the end of the second example and tomorrow is going to go into the uh, meat and potatoes of this, of this chapter explaining the, the ten sefirahs after understanding the two things. On the one hand is we can see God from our flesh because we are godly. On the other hand, we shouldn't think that being that we are godly, that we are, can be compared, God forbid, no. It's different, different, uh, different level, or except in essence, we come from it. So this is the end of today's uh, Tanya. Join us again tomorrow. Thank you for joining. Nine o'clock tomorrow morning, live. Anybody has uh, if you have a question, now is the time.